Hi, welcome to Father of Games. Today we're looking at Ryan Lockett's newest game, Now or Never. Now before we jump into the rules, I quickly need to say that there's two ways to play this game. There's a story mode, which features a six chapter campaign, and the standard mode. It's recommended the players don't start with the story mode, and once you know the rules for the standard mode, the story mode is very easy to figure out. So that's why this video is only going to focus on the standard mode. But if you have any questions, leave a comment down below, and I'll be happy to answer any questions I can. And with that, let's take a look at how to play. Now or Never will have one to four players trying to rebuild the cliffside village known as the Monument. A meteorite has crashed, causing catastrophic damage and bringing in terrible monsters along with it. People are desperate as they flee from the chaos and destruction this meteorite has brought. It's your job to bring these people back to safety to fight off the monsters and rebuild. But the clock's ticking. Will six rounds be enough time to rebuild more than your opponents? To set up, start by removing all these components. They will only be used during the story mode or when playing with the underground side of the map, which I won't be covering in this video. Next, you need to set up each of the boards. Starting with the game board, place it in the center of the table. For the standard game that we're setting up here, the light side of the board is used. After that, shuffle the three random location tiles and deal out one to each spot on the board that has a scroll symbol in the top left corner. All order tokens are then shuffled and placed face down on the Town of Miners location. Next, place out enemy tokens at each numbered location matching the number on the token with the number space on the game board, dealing out one monster per player at each space, with the exception of the level 9 monsters which you'll deal out just one monster if playing with less than 3 players, otherwise deal out two. All unused monster tokens are returned to the box. Next, Deal out the search tokens face down to each spot on the board with a letter in the bottom left corner, returning the unused search tokens to the box. When placing tokens, be sure not to ever cover up the mountain icons here. Moving on to the season board, place it next to the game board flame side down and put the season marker on the one space. Next, organize the gear tokens into the blue and red types and put a random tile at each of the three spots of the matching color. And the remaining tokens are put face down at the top of the board, forming a draw pile. And finally, deal out 6 random villagers to each highlighted spot on the board. Next, each player grabs a hero board of their choice and a town board, and both boards can be placed underneath the game board here. The town board is placed with the light side face up, and to finish the setup with this board, each player puts a tool, shell, bottle demon, book, and crystal marker in the bottom left corner of their board on the zero. Now moving on to the hero board, each player puts a heart on the space with the highest value and a mana token over top of the each highlighted mana symbols on their board. Each player then places a hero action token on each of the three highlighted spots here, and after that each player grabs their three blue and three red hero abilities, the master player's name, and place them at the bottom of the hero board along with the four sided die. Finally, specialists need to be added to the board. Grab all starting specialists as indicated by this symbol on their back and each player receives one random builder and one random healer, returning the remaining starting specialist to the box. Any specialist that isn't a starting specialist can be put in a face down pile next to the season board with the top four specialists being dealt out face up. Now with all the boards set up, there's a few more things that need to be done. Starting with the building tiles, there's four identical sets of 20 building tiles, each with a different colored back. Each player takes the 20 tiles with the same colored back of their choice and deals them out randomly face up in a 5x4 grid next to their town board. After that, organize the quest cards by the three types, place them near the game board, and each player draws 6 basic, 1 artifact, and 1 advanced quest card from the top of each corresponding deck, and chooses just 4 of those 8 cards to keep returning any unchosen cards to form a discard pile in front of each of the corresponding decks. After that, place the experience tokens and coins in reach of all players, and each player takes 17 coins from the supply. Each player then places the standee of their matching player on the monument location on the board, and the player who most recently won a game is given the first player marker. In clockwise order, the second and third player receive one extra coin, and the fourth player receives two extra coins. And with that, the game can begin with the first player. Starting with the first player and going clockwise from there, players choose one of two possible actions, either a specialist action or a hero action. As the name suggests, specialist actions are related to yours and other player specialists, and the hero actions only relate to your hero. Let's take a look at these actions in more detail. If a specialist action is chosen, a player may choose one of three possible actions. Use a specialist ability, recruit a new specialist, and use their new ability right away, or to rest a specialist. To use a specialist ability, pay the cost on any of your specialists or any of your opponent's specialists by paying the upper coin cost here to the supply and doing the action as listed here. 
If one of your opponent specialists was chosen, then they receive the smaller coin value as listed here as a tax, but you still pay the top coin value. If a player chose to recruit a new specialist as an action, then one of the four revealed specialists beside the board could be chosen. That player pays double the cost shown in the top coin value, adds it to their board, and immediately gets to do that specialist's new ability, flipping the specialist over at the end of the turn. And finally, if any player chooses to exhaust the specialist, they flip over the chosen specialist and gain either two hearts or one coin from the supply. But opponent specialists cannot be rested, only your own may be chosen for this action. Let's quickly go over what some of the specialists do before moving on to the hero actions. If the chosen specialist shows this symbol, then the player recovers all their hearts and also gains one tool resource. If this specialist is chosen, then one gear from the supply may be purchased by paying its cost. And if this specialist was chosen, then that player may build one building onto their town board. When choosing what buildings to construct, any of the buildings on the outside border may be chosen for the first building, and the first building must be placed in the bottom row here, gaining that player one shell as shown. When choosing a building on a later turn, any of the buildings adjacent to ones that have already been selected may be chosen, and there's place adjacent to ones that have already been built. So as a quick example, if this was my starting setup and I chose to build, I'd pay the 5 coin cost to use my specialist, flipping the specialist over, and I'd pay the 3 coins as listed on the building's cost here. And i place this building here, gaining me 1 shell immediately and 2 coins on all future production phases. Say in my next turn I wanted to build again, well this time I have no more building specialists, so I choose one of my opponents, paying the 5 coins again, but letting them receive the 3 coins from the supply as a tax. Then out of the adjacent buildings to the one I've already built, I choose this one, paying the 4 coins listed, and place it adjacent to my previously played building here, gaining me another shell immediately, as shown, and one more during each production phase. On the town board, all icons are bonuses gained for placing a building there, except for the coin icon. Those are added costs that must be paid to place a building in that location. The hero action can be chosen if a player has at least one heart remaining, otherwise the specialist action must be chosen instead. If the hero action is chosen, that player must complete a series of three actions in order. Starting with moving. To move, choose one of the three hero action slots, moving up to a number of spaces as the value shown. Then the slot is covered up and will remain that way until the end of the round, so players can only move a maximum of three times around. You can never move diagonally, and if a player enters a location with a mountain symbol or an enemy that they choose not to fight, then they lose one heart for each corresponding space. If a player wishes to move more spaces than the value listed on their hero action slot, then they can move as many more as they like, but must lose one heart for each extra spot moved. After a player moves, they may play a quest card. This is the only of the three actions that is optional. To play a quest card, it must match the location that player is present in, and any cost to play the card is in the top right corner. Quest cards can grant you points at the end of the game, new abilities, and potentially new monsters to fight to gain rewards. After one quest card is chosen, or if the quest action is skipped, then that player proceeds with the last mandatory action. They can either visit a location, search, or fight an enemy. To visit a location, pay the cost shown on the location and gain the reward listed. If you choose to complete the search action, a search token must be present in your location. To search, roll the die and take an amount of damage as the value rolled, then flip over the search token and gain the reward listed. After that, place it beside your board face down and it will grant you one coin at each production phase. And finally, if the visit location or search actions are not chosen, then a player must fight an enemy. To do this, an enemy must be in your location. In combat, you roll a four-sided die and damage is dealt to you and the monster simultaneously. After the die is rolled, that player looks at their board to see how much damage they dealt, matching up the number rolled with the corresponding attack of the same number. And the monster will at the same time deal an amount of damage as listed on the token here to that player. Some or all of this damage can be blocked by items. After damage is dealt, that player may end combat by retreating, in which case they remain on the same location, but the fight ends and they receive no reward. If the retreat is not chosen and the enemy is not defeated, then another round of combat ensues in the same way by re-rolling the die and dealing out damage simultaneously until you or the monster is defeated. The monster's health is located here and if you reach or exceed its value, it is defeated. But remember, attacks happen at the same time, so even if you defeat an enemy, if his counterattack managed to bring your health to zero, then the fight is over and you lost. The monster remains at that location in that case, he goes back to full health and you remain at zero and must heal before choosing another hero action on a later turn. But in that case, as a small trade-off, you receive one experience token. If however you manage to win your fight, the defeated monster is removed from the board and that player may claim the reward listed on the white icons on the token. In this case, one experience token and one villager from the board. 
So just to quickly summarize, on their turn each player can do either the specialist or hero action. The specialist action lets you use the action on yours or any other player's specialist, recruit a new specialist and use its ability immediately, or rest one of your own specialists, gaining either two hearts or one coin. If the specialist action is not chosen, then that player can perform the hero action, letting them perform a mandatory move, then an optional quest, and then either search, fight, or visit a location. Each hero has their own ability as listed in the text here. Some abilities require mana tokens to be paid, which each player has here. The mana tokens can also be paid during combat to increase the damage dealt to enemies to a maximum of once each time the die is rolled during the fight. Now there's also a small list of anytime actions that as the name suggests, players can perform anytime. As an anytime action, players can purchase one of their hero abilities by spending experience tokens. Abilities come in level 1, level 2, and level 3, and you must have a level 1 ability to purchase a level 2 ability of the same color, or a level 2 ability to purchase a level 3. Another anytime action is to sell goods for coins. Throughout the game, players gain different resources, which values are tracked at the bottom of their town board. These can be traded any time for the appropriate number of coins as listed on the season board. For example, two tools and one shell can be traded in for seven coins. Another anytime action is to place one of your villagers. These are primarily gained by fighting monsters and villagers may be placed anywhere on your board assuming there's a building in that row that can hold them. Each building can hold exactly one villager unless otherwise stated. So if this is what my town looked like, then this row could currently house three villagers. As another anytime action, players could also spend two experience to refill the available villagers. Don't worry, the discarded ones go on to a better place. And finally, the last anytime action is to complete an order. Orders may be acquired by visiting the town of Miner's location, and to complete them, pay the cost shown, in this case two bottle demons, and three tools, and you receive the listed rewards. In this case, 19 coins immediately, and two points at the end of the game. Okay, I think that sums up all the actions players can take, and when a player can't or chooses not to take any more actions, then they pass. When all players pass, the round is over, and the production phase can begin. During the production phase, players refresh their mana and hero tokens, as well as all their specialists, and players gain anything produced as shown by the grave on either their villagers, buildings, or search tokens. In this case, the player would gain one shell, one tool, and two coins. After that, move the marker on the season board up one space, and the player who currently has a first player marker starts the next round. Play continues the same way for six rounds, but at the end of the sixth round, things change a little bit. Before the production phase commences on the 6th round, players discard all of their coins and all of their resources with the exception of the books are set to 0. Next, discard all uncompleted quest cards and order tokens. Now produce from your villagers in town as normal and after that it's highly recommended that any resources gained are traded in for more coins. After that, add up the score. Each coin is worth 1 point, also gain any points listed on quest cards or order tokens any points from having completed rows in your town, and finally gain victory points as shown in the corresponding row if you have one of each type of villager in it. Add that all up, and you're not going to see this coming, but the player with the highest score wins the game. And in the case of a tie, the player with the most experience and books is the winner. And if there's still a tie, then the player with the most remaining hearts is the winner. And that's how you play Now or Never. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for more videos.